This is the story of a river, the River Avon. In fact, there are quite a few rivers called Avon, and in Welsh, the word Afon means river. So you could say the River Avon means river river. Now, in this country, there are River Avons in Devon, Hampshire, and Bristol, among others. But this is the most famous Avon. This is the Avon of Shakespeare. This is the Warwickshire Avon. The river rises near Naseby in Northamptonshire, famous for its civil war battle, and flows as the border of Northamptonshire and Leicestershire. It then crosses right through Warwickshire, flowing through Warwick, Stratford-upon-Avon, Evesham and on to Tewkesbury, where it flows into the River Severn and out into the Atlantic via the Severn Estuary. In this programme, I'll be looking at the river as a transport route. All of this may look natural, but it has been moulded by man over centuries. A natural river is difficult to navigate for all but the very smallest boats, and it was soon found that boats could carry large and heavy loads with little effort to move them along by manpower, by horses or whatever. Originally, they just dammed the river so it was deep enough for boats to sail along it until they got grounded. Now here, near Cropthorne, there was once a water gate, a single gate that let a boat travel from downstream. The gate was closed and then the boat would wait for the water level to rise until the boat could continue its journey further up towards Fladbury. Now this wasn't a very suitable arrangement because it meant the river was closed for other traffic and also, when the gate was open, there was the risk that a boat further upstream could get stranded. So they came up with the idea of the lock, still in use today. The river is still dammed to raise the water level up to make it navigable. All along the Avon, there are these weirs that hold back the water so boats can travel along the waterway. But each weir is a lock, so boats can be lifted or lowered from one water level to the next. So, how does a lock work? It's simply two sets of gates, so a boat trying to go upstream passes in through the first set of gates into the high-sided lock and the gates closed behind them. Then, on the upper gates, side small doors, sluices, are opened to allow water into what is now a sealed area and the water fills the lock, lifting the boat up to the higher level. Once the level in the lock has reached the level of the upper water, then the sluices can be closed and the upstream gates opened for the vessel to continue on its journey. The Avon was first made navigable in the 15th century. An Act of Parliament of 1751 was passed for the better regulating the navigation of the River Avon. This brought into effect sufficient tolls to support the building and maintenance of the river, and it prospered until the arrival of the railways, and declined so much that above Pershore it became a natural river once again, with broken down locks and reeds and debris soon silting it up. It was not until 1972 that a new act was passed to make the river navigable again, and the Upper Avon Navigation Trust was formed. It used an army of volunteers, even prisoners from the local prison, to help rebuild the locks and repair the weirs. In the lower reaches of the Avon, the existing locks were restored, but above Evesham, all the way to Stratford, new locks were built from scratch. In some places, the channel was blocked by the old stonework, so the army were called in to blow it up. By 1974, the Avon as a waterway was open up to Stratford-upon-Avon, and the Queen Mother came to officially open the river on the 1st of July. It had taken a lot of money in grants and donations to reopen the river, and it has been used regularly ever since. The Trust still uses volunteers to maintain the river and has four full-time members of staff, including Chris Murfin, who is the Evesham lockkeeper. On this stretch of the river, Chris is the only lock keeper. All the rest are operated by the river users themselves. 
Not only is he seen as the presence of the trust on the river, but he also makes sure that all the boats have a valid license to use it. They vary from £8 for the day to £170 for the longest boats for the year. As we saw, most of the locks are operated by hand, but here the gates are hydraulically operated. So, instead of the back-breaking lean on the lock gates, a simple touch of the lever does the work. Though even here, the sluices have to be operated by hand. Chris fell into the job almost by accident. Seven years ago, he sold his house in Devon, built a narrowboat and started travelling the canals of Britain. This is the only lock on the river that sells ice creams. OK, back to you. On his return leg, he came down from Birmingham to Stratford, then down the Avon until he got to Evesham, and he has stayed here ever since. Until recently, he was living in the lock keeper's cottage, but the floods in 2007 put an end to that. Stretched to the limit as flooding causes more chaos, one county is forced to call in the military. More than 100 people are winched to safety in a day of dramatic rescues. The floods in the summer of 2007 were some of the greatest on record. Whole swathes of the countryside along the Severn and the Avon were inundated with water. Chris's house, even though it was on stilts, was flooded up to the window line, and all around there were houses and caravans flooded and swept away. Yeah, my brother, he lives in Australia, and he phoned up and he says, oh, I've seen your house on the television and your boat floating right up around the roof of the house. And that's halfway around the world he saw that. The clear-up took months, and even over a year later, not everybody has returned home. It's hard to imagine the scene of devastation that was all along the river, but even a few hours of heavy rain turned the peaceful Avon into a torrent, and the river drains from the land and heads for the sea. This is Fladbury Lock and its remote location is one of the reasons that this is the last lock on the River Avon to have old wooden gates. Now as you can see they are past their sell-by date and they leak a lot so if nothing were done this lock would become unusable and the river would once again revert back to nature. They have left this lock to last because it's so difficult to get the machinery and equipment to the site. But once completed, the river will once again be a navigable river to be enjoyed by hundreds of boats and holidaymakers as they make their way along the River Avon. <laughs>